So a quick disclaimer before we get into uh, my NFL recap for week 13. So we filmed it or recorded it right before uh, Jets defensive coordinator Greg Williams was fired this afternoon. And uh, I mean, you could have seen that coming, running that blitz on third and 10 and giving up that just terrible final play to the Raiders to lose that game in spectacular Jets fashion. Uh, The interesting to note with Greg Williams being fired, I never thought he should have been in league after Bounty Gate, but that's a whole other topic. The biggest thing is that with the firing, it kind of seemed like management really wanted to win that game, which should be counterintuitive to the tanking process right now. So it'll be interesting to see if maybe the Jets actually get a boost on defense now that Greg Williams is out the door and maybe they'll actually start calling the right defensive plays. So just keep that in mind as we walk it through. I'm going to bash him and we all knew he should have been fired, but now it's official. All right, let's get to the recap. I got to... uh... I got to go right to the NFL because my Twitter yesterday has been blowing up about one thing. Luckily, everyone has been very vague about that thing, and I've purposefully not looked into that thing because I want you to tell me. So what the fuck went on with the Jets yesterday? Okay, this is perfect. And before I get into the Jets, uh, I just want to shout out NFL Red Zone, which is like a channel that a lot of people watch because basically what it, the channel does is it covers all the games going on, but it only shows the games when teams are in like the 25 yard line of the other team's mm. area. And that's the red zone. And so it allows you to keep track of all the games at the same time. Uh, and so that's kind of the channel I had on yesterday. Cause we have some fans of Cowboys and uh, the Buccaneers and then myself with the Broncos, but none of those teams were playing in the early or the afternoon slate so we didn't have to have those on so we had red zone on and uh shout out to them because it was their 200th episode uh and it's been over 11 years now and scott hansen he's a pro's pro he's done seven hours of commercial free football coverage for 11 years now and has only ever taken one bathroom break on the show wow imagine going seven hours without going in the washroom there must be a science to like your liquid and food intake behind that. <laughs> I just wonder if he's got a setup. Like he's just got a Gatorade bottle there in the, <laughs> under the desk. Yeah, man. I mean, like coffee and beer are the two things I feel like I'd need for seven hours of sports. And yeah. there's no way to do that without bathroom breaks. So I guess men's running on different fuel. Yeah. Shout out to him. All right. Sorry. Now what the fuck went on with yeah, the Jets? Sorry. <laughs> so the Jets. They're playing the Las Vegas Raiders, and this game had a little bit of significance because last year, around the same time, the Raiders lost to the Jets, and it completely derailed their season. And the Raiders last week had the same type of performance against the Falcons, where the Falcons just blew them out, and everyone's thinking, oh no, the Raiders, who were looking promising for a wildcard spot, are just going to go off the deep end just like they did last year. So in this fourth quarter... The Raiders are up 21 to 17. No, sorry, 24 to 21. Yes. Even and, game. Yeah. And the Jets come down and they score a touchdown with about four minutes left in the game. And the Jets take the lead, 28 24. And everyone's freaking out because the Jets don't ever score points in the second half. <laughs> and this is preceded by a pretty solid Raiders drive and they get right down to the end zone first and goal don't score second goal third and goal and fourth and goal the jets get the stop oh and there's about two minutes left in the game and everyone's freaking out it's like the jets are gonna win what are they doing they're tanking jets fans are so mad because it's like we can't even get the first overall pick right we just can't because <laughs> also in the other game the vikings are playing the jaguars and the jaguars are one in ten and that's who the jets are racing with Right. And the Jaguars have just scored to take the lead in their game. <laughs> and so everyone's like, what is going on right now? These, both these teams should be trying to lose. <laughs> and so the Jets get the ball. They run it three times, and the Raiders have to use all their timeouts. And then they punt the ball back to the Raiders. About 40 seconds left, and the Raiders have no timeouts, and they're around their 30-yard line. And everyone's thinking the Jets – all they have to do is play prevent defense, let the keep the Raiders receivers in front of them, tackle, run out the clock, you win the game. 
because even a field goal doesn't tie it. They need to score a touchdown. Gotcha. Second and 10, Carr drops back. Nelson Aguilar springs free in the middle of the field. Carr throws a deep ball, and he misses Aguilar over the middle, and the ball bounces into the end zone and just threw an incomplete pass. And everyone's like, what are they doing? They just, if Carr had hit him, it would have been a touchdown, and the Raiders would have won. So everyone's freaking about that play. Next play, third and 10. The Jets go cover zero, and they send eight people on a blitz. <laughs> to just try and make him get the ball out of his hands. But Carr avoids the pressure, steps up, and launches a 55-yard dime to Henry Ruggs, who beats the coverage and scores a touchdown. And the Raiders beat the Jets in the last seconds of the game. And it was just pandemonium. (laughs) Because at the same time as that's happening, the Jacksonville Jaguars score a touchdown and get the two-point conversion to send that game to overtime. Right. And so everyone was like, the Jaguars and Jets are going to win. And then all of a sudden, the Raiders pull off this crazy last-second miracle touchdown because of stupid play calling by the Jets. It's actually brilliant tanking. Yeah, I was going to say that (laughs) calling a blitz on a third and 10 on the last play of the game when all you have to do is stop a touchdown. I I don't know how to explain that other than like the GM calling the coach and being like, listen, you have to fuck this up. (laughs) There's no other way. Like the guys, not, what? Like that's the sort of shit I did when we were playing Madden and twelve years old. Yeah, like, what? It was perfection. So the Jets were losing by winning, and then won at losing in the end to pull out the loss, which is ultimately the win. Nothing gets better. It is incredible. So the Jets finished. They're zero and twelve now on the season. Out the of Jaguars place. ended up losing in overtime. Oh, good on them. <laughs> so they're 1-11. And, 11. and uh, Trevor Lawrence, if he was watching the NFL today, he's just got to be thinking to himself, oh, my God. Is he the projected number one pick? Yeah, so he won the national title with Clemson in his uh, freshman year. Yeah. And in college football, you have to play three years before you're eligible for the draft. Okay. So everyone's been waiting two years for him to finally get to eligibility so he's been like the consensus number one pick for quite a few years now and gotcha. yeah everyone's excited for him and he's probably just sitting there oh god both of these teams are so bad yeah, yeah. And, um, <laughs> there was it was and it and that was just like part of the craziness we actually had it so i told you on friday that i was not very excited for the slate this weekend because it was kind of a lot of matchups between teams on the lower end and teams on the higher end. And then some of the like really exciting matchups or good teams had a buy this week. And we have two games tonight and then one game tomorrow. So it just wasn't, wasn't the best, but like the early games had an amazing fourth quarter. There's just a bunch going on. And so there was like the jets and there was the Vikings and Jaguars. And then the next game that I wanted to talk about because it was kind of the marquee game was the Browns and Titans yeah. where the Browns came out and absolutely thumped the Titans in the first half. And they have done the best job against Derrick Henry that any team has done this season. And they were up, I think it was like 35 to seven at halftime. Oh, wow. Yeah. And they just like both sides of the ball. They had their play action working. The run game was working. And then they were stuffing the Titans on the other side of the ball on defense. And then in the second half, the Titans ended up making it a, it ended up being a six point game to finish out. It was 41 to 35 for the Browns. So (laughs) that like that game was crazy. And then like so much was going on. The the, uh, Falcons had like a last second hail Mary to try and tie the game. The Lions won because the Bears fumbled with like a minute left in the fourth quarter and the Lions got the ball and scored a game-winning touchdown. The Texans had the last play of the game in the red zone to win and they fumbled the snap and the Colts recovered and the game ended. The Bengals and the Dolphins got into a full team brawl on the field because uh, on a punt return, one of the Bengals guys just lit up the punt returner before he'd even caught the ball. It was like he was just looking up at the – and sorry to the podcast listeners, but he was looking up at the sky, and this guy came in and just nailed him 
right before he was about to catch it. And then the coach of the Dolphins was like on the field trying to go fight everyone and his like linemen were holding him back. It was it was chaos in that opening window. Man, no wonder you were having trouble studying. Yeah, it was it definitely did not get as much done as I wanted to. But it was certainly entertaining. Yeah. And then after that, it, it things calmed down a little bit, but we had a really big upset in the afternoon window. I called the Rams beating the Cardinals, and, and that kind of turned out the way I thought it would. But the Giants and the Seahawks game, I don't know what's going on with the Seahawks, but like their offense looks really, really bad. And the end of the first half, we had, the, we had a 5 nothing game, which you don't see in football games. They're really bizarre. How do you get – a field goal and a safety. Oh. But it was, it was like a hockey score. It was bizarre yeah. to see. And then the Giants ended up getting a ton of rushing yards from Wayne Gallman, who I guess I should have started again. He was my sleeper last week. <laughs> and uh, they ended up beating the Seahawks. So the Giants, the NFC East leaders at 5-7 and seven now, get a <laughs> big win against a team not in their own division. So that's a huge win for them. And the Seahawks, like, they, did, they had a pretty easy stretch, and this is a game they couldn't afford to lose because now the Rams take charge of the NFC West, and they fall into a wild-card spot. Uh, the Eagles and the Packers game was another exciting afternoon game. We finally saw Carson Wentz, Wentz get benched. <laughs> Wentz get benched. <laughs> Mixing up my words there. <laughs> and Jalen Hurts finally got in the game, and it looked like the Eagles had a bit of a spark, but uh, the Packers were able to hold on to that one. And then the last game in the afternoon slate, the Patriots and the Chargers, you could have kind of foreseen this because Belichick is just unbelievable when he's coaching against rookie quarterbacks. And everyone was so hyped about Justin Herbert, who I mentioned to you about last kind of Trey Young of the NFL, and they got shut out. The Patriots absolutely killed them. And the Patriots had a ton of special teams stuff too. Like they had a punt return for a touchdown and – uh, some big like punt returns that weren't touchdowns, but really had them in great field position. And it was like, yeah, it was, it was, they just stomped right over them. And it's another just notch in the tool belt for Belichick as he continues to just make rookie quarterbacks look uh, inferior than like rookies. Rest. Yeah, exactly. So, and that actually, the it kind of vaults the Patriots closer into that playoff competition but the problem was that all those wild card teams won this week so the browns the colts and the dolphins all won this week so it's still they didn't gain any ground but just that afc playoff picture is looking real tight and then on the other side with the the uh, nfc the vikings now with that win against the jaguars actually jump over the cardinals and sit in that seventh spot but they're both six and six uh and so it'll be interesting to see what kind of comes down the wire with those two teams. And I think the Vikings have a slightly easier schedule, but it will be interesting to see how the NFC playoff picture turns out the Sunday night game. As a Broncos fan, I could see this coming. I knew it was going to be tight because the Broncos have such great red zone defense and the chiefs in recent weeks have been settling for a lot of field goals. I don't, I think they're just trying out like, they're trying to make it as hard as possible because the regular season's just too easy for them. So they're just trying all these little knickknack fun plays. They had a guy come in motion from top to bottom of the screen. And then they were doing an option play where Mahomes was running that same direction, but then handed it off for reverse going the other way to Tyree kill. They're just trying like fun stuff to see what was working. And the Broncos were able to stop them for the most part, but then they get one touchdown Drew Locke throws another interception, and that game's pretty much wrapped up. And the Chiefs, uh, eleven and one now, and it looks like they're bored. Quite honestly, they're just ready for the playoffs at this point. Yeah, and that was kind of it was a busy day, despite my worries going into the weekend. And we've still got three more games left in the next two days to kind of finish up the playoff picture and week thirteen and. It should be good. I'm looking forward to tonight's game with the Bills and the Niners. I had that circled as one of the fun matchups on Friday. And that's pretty much it for me. The NFL action was good this weekend, and I did not get enough studying done. (laughs) That's my summary. 
glad to hear it and a little sorry I missed it, but you did a nice job filling me in. Thanks. I appreciate that. All right. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, uh, we're going to talk some combat corner. <laughs> 